What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Gears Pro League. I am Colin the Crow Clark, and I'm being joined by the one and the only, the most unique man on the planet because he's smarter than the average bear. He's faster than the average cheetah. He's stronger than the average lion, and he can cross you out faster than a tic-tac-toe board. I'll tell you what, the one time I ran into Toby and the boys and ranked, I ain't never forget it. That thing is nightmares. I don't play as much ranks as I did, Colin. I'll be honest. Well, but, I mean, uh, back in the day, back in the day, I did, but when I did, I, I tended to roam in stacks. Yes, yes, <sighs> we did. We did. We did like our ranked experiences. I, I will say yes. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, apparently, apparently, God is cute against uh, me too. So that's actually really cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> but uh, I played a lot of ranked, so I've probably played a lot against a lot of people in Twitch chat, and uh, they probably hate me for it because yes, I did stack a lot and. Uh, yeah, I did play like it was Gears Esports, I've been told as well. So that's really cool. That's really cool to hear. I, I take that as a compliment, you know, most of the time, but they have a You're right. You, sh you shouldn't well. play like the best players in the world, Toby. That's always been my response. I'm like, you know what? I shouldn't try to emulate the best players on planet Earth. It's fine. Don't worry. It's whatever. What we do need to worry about, though, Toby, is Team Queso and Casa de Papel. We got two teams about to go at it, going to need to get a victory here, trying to find a way to come out on top. Let's take a look at this Team Queso roster first. Can they come out on top with this group of guys they got over there now with Team Queso? Because they may or may not have a new baby over there. I mean, you know, you got to think about it. Oh, there we go, baby. Let's bring them on up. Problem Sleeper Crystallize and the multi-time champion himself, Summons. Mmm, that's the last name we all have to think about, Summons. Uh, pleasure to watch him and this team yesterday on broadcast. Played very well, but... uh. Yeah, uh, some great moments, but not enough moments, shall we say, of greatness. But definitely showed so much potential. All eyes on summons once again today to see if he can step up to the plate and elevate Team Queso. Best eyebrows in the game, bar none, without a doubt. Let's take a look at Casa de Papel and the team they're bringing into this one. You know them, you love them. Javi, Adverse, Chaos, and Solar. Uh, this is uh, your former Abuelo Jesus Nieto's roster, now under the Casa de Papel banner. You like this roster as much as I do, Toby? I just love the way that they play around one another, the way that they basically use one another as, as kind of a springboard to make the next play. Yeah, I do. I, I, I really like this team. Chappy has come up on uh, many casters' radars from the moment he really stepped foot in Pro League, right? And he's had roster changes, advers, and chaos. We've known and loved them for a very long time. And Sola is also a new gun like Chavi, and when you join those four together and have the experience on on the side of two and kind of that raw energy and newness of the other two, um, it really sets uh, sparks up to occur uh, time and time again. And uh, this is a really good match and a good opportunity for themselves now to really put themselves ahead of the pack a little bit, you know? Um, we've been talking about, I've, I've been mentioning the, the phrase middle of the pack team, if you will, in Pro League. Team Queso are not a top Pro League team, historically. They are a middle of the pack team too, but also so a Cassidy Bell. And uh, I think these are the two teams you really want to keep your eyes close on now, especially Rebel as well, thinking of back now, because they have had some great moments too. Think about these two teams as they go up against each other to really see who's going to be the one that kind of edges out the other in that long-term standing of Pro League and also put themselves in a get the best position going forward into that all-important final major. This is going to be a really cool test, I think, between these two teams. I'm excited to see who comes out on top, Colin. Somebody who always seems to have an answer to most of those tests, though, I believe is our player to watch for this series. It's going to be Sleeper. That man found a way to evolve himself from a long-time support player to a main slayer. He has done it all and done everything necessary to give his team the best possible chance to win. Team Queso's Sleeper is one to keep your eye on in this matchup. Yeah, and a very high kill participation rate as well, 26.83%. A bit above average, I want to say, for uh, for pro players in general here uh, in terms of the stats of Pro League. 1.9 KD, absolutely nothing to scoff at, but something we need to mention is his ability with power weapons. He's fantastic with the snipe, and I really want to see him go off today against his opponents. A really good chance, as I said, for his team to, uh, to really... Get a, gain an advantage and a gain a little bit of an edge over their opposition here, especially as a rival as close as, as Casa de Papel. And players like him can absolutely be the player to watch to give your team that edge in those team fights and when you do finally get your hands on those power weapons. Look, you talk about his kill participation being higher than your average pro player across the league. You can take the player out of the support position 
but you can't take the support out of the player. That man is willing to help anybody and everybody on his team at any given moment, no matter what spawn he's having to roll out of. Let's take a look at the maps that have been banned out between these two teams, though. Already in this one, Reactor, District, Tomb, Canals, and Vascar go to the wayside. We will get a different escalation map, and that's reason enough for me to cheer. And, Toby, I do like the way that this is starting to set up because I'm do going through my checklist in my head of if these are banned, then this is picked, and so on and so forth. But the, let's bring up those picks already. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Toby, take me through these map picks. Ah, interesting. Ritual coming out straight away for Casa, and I was actually giving Team Cakes a little bit of a grilling yesterday on broadcast because they picked it against EU United of all teams and then proceeded to get smashed on it. So I don't know if uh, Casa de Papel was actually the team watching there to make sure that they can learn from that and see if they can topple Team Queso. Check out Exe, a great map for Team Queso historically. Some had really good major performances in that one. We see Harbour coming in for Casa. Regency control for Team Queso. Again, they've actually beaten some very good teams, some of the top teams in Pro League in the last major, uh, in the last Pro League, excuse me. Uh, split and now a fear execution for map number five before we get to it. That's an interesting one if we do find there. Casa, a very good team on that one too. So what you're telling me, based on yesterday's performances, is that Team Queso has got to win this thing in the first four. They can't go to that map five. They, they can't find themselves on a fear based on how they performed, or is that just because they were going up against the United? Do they have a shot on map five against Casa de Papel? And I ask you that because I'm trying to get an insight into your predictions, Toby. I'm getting even closer to you now. Look at this. I'm getting right up into this mic. Damn. That's scary, man. That's very scary. You're an intimidating guy, Colin. All right. <laughs> I the wish. skull's behind you as well. Um, but no. I mean, you asked me for my prediction, so I will comply. Um, map number five is a big deal. Casa were very good at that. I do wonder if we get to that, who will come out on top. I would actually lead, lead an edge towards Casa, but will we get to it, though? My prediction is I don't think we will. I think Team Casa will take this one, actually. It's going to be a very close series. That's my honest prediction. I do genuinely think it's going to be a close one. But Team Casa, they've shown me moments of excellence. I still have trust in summons as a pickup for this roster of Team Casa. The, the word I used... Uh, or the phrase I used yesterday again uh, to Taylor and describing Team Queso is that someone brings that really top-level player edge to a roster that has been historically a more average Pro League team, not one of the worst, not one of the best, um, and gives them the potential of putting themselves um, in amongst the very top teams to challenge the likes of the PKs, the KCPs, Rise, etc. So now I want to see Team Queso really fill out that potential. I do trust them in this matchup. So yeah, that's why I'm going for Team Queso. Well, every day I write on paper, I'm a big old school notebook guy. I'm not big on the technology. I don't know why everybody else is. I like to write down on real paper. I like to hold it in my hands because paper, there's just something special about paper. But my wife made a pasta tonight with five different types of cheeses in it. So I'm going <laughs> Team Queso, brother. I got I got enough cheese here to float a battleship. So I'm going Team Queso one way or the other. I'm going to see if they can pull it out for us. I mean, fair. Very fair assessment. <laughs> that reminds me of a, a, a former key to victory, a friend. I don't, I can't remember the exact one now that I brought it up. But I uh, hope it wasn't something cut to do with cheese because that's what's going to happen later. Something to do with cheese. Yeah, I mean cutting the cheese as well. Stack that cheese. sounds that sounds nice. No, that's not. Yeah. That's you're you're from. I forget that you're from the other uh, side of the pond. Uh, that that's means not, uh, okay. That's that's like flatulence. We're do, we're doing we're doing poo jokes now. Really? I'd have never yeah. guessed that. Over here, that's what that means, Toby. Over oh, here, that's what... I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, God, I love you so that, much I mean. for not knowing that, and it just it warms my heart that the Boy, world is, that is common, different Is that like people. a common saying that I've never yes. heard of? You know, in America. Down here in the South, like, if you round if you round these parts, because you got a lot of cows, you got a lot of milk, you got a lot of cheese byproduct, you got goat cheese, all that good rap. Sure, yeah. Somebody lets one go, man. You just say, who cut the cheese out here? I mean, that thing... Whoo! Oh, gracious. <laughs> where, chat, where are you going with this? You cutting the cheese on us, chat? You getting you you getting in on the cheese cutting with us, chat? I yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That that you know we've gone three in a row now for Team Queso. This is a very close game, Colin. You know we had three in a row for, uh, predictions for Rise last game. That was a bit more clear cut. It's safe to say, right? Rebel definitely underdogs. In this one, I don't Pioneers know if we have was three. Pioneers was three now. Three now. I, I think this could be. I think this will be the closest match of the entire night. Right? I, I, and Team Queso... You'd assume they, so. You'd assume so, yes. Statistically. Yes, absolutely. 
And I don't think we have an underdog in the series. I think it's very closely matched. So that's saying something. We've all put a lot of hope into Team Queso and cheese. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see because Team Queso has historically kind of struggled on on your controls, but they've been exquisite at your executions and your escalations and that map five being a map that they struggled so horribly last night. I mean, I remember I was talking to the voice of God later on in the evening. I said, brother, I saw a highlight where Demise is just bouncing back and forth on the middle stairwell. And it's not even like a fast bounce. It's not like one of those shifty shoulder bounces. It's, it's literally just wall. It's like he did. It was like he was playing Gears 1 again. He had no wall cancel. He was just yeah. take a cover, take a cover, take a cover, yeah. take a cover, take a And they couldn't hit him. They couldn't take him down. And I said, brother, that is not good news. And now I see that they got to play a, a fear of map five. I said they're normally better at execution. So we might end up seeing this be like, you know, 1 0, 1 1, 2 1, 2 2. And then we go to the map five and it's like, man, Team Case, you can be able to pull it out. You can be able to, mm. to re rotate here on this map five because that's, we could, this is extraordinarily close. I think people underestimate just how close competition wise and talent wise this matchup really is. Yeah, I'm glad we're reinforcing that because you'd look at the screen, it's just all Team Queso and think, all oh, right, a viewer who've just tuned in might think, oh, it's, it's going to be Team Queso who takes this one. No, it's actually very close between these two. Um, we have our reasons why we, me and you have predicted Team Queso, and I'm sure chat does, uh, you know, but it's a lot closer, you can tell, even with chat alone in terms of the points, uh, in terms of the predictions than, say, the previous two matches. So, hey... Let's wait and see how this one pans out. I'm uh, I'm excited actually to see again Team Queso. Can they really turn up today? A very difficult series they had thrust upon themselves uh, yesterday. Um, and Cassidy Papal, some great moments as well, which is why I'm a little bit uh, concerned about uh, Athera in general for Team Queso if they do get there. Because Cassa was scary on that map in a lot of uh, a lot of the rounds. Well, we'll see if they can do that. If if they can really come out. You know, firing on all cylinders. Everybody's loaded up into the map. We are waiting for the final checks to come through. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sweet battleship takeoff sequence. Like you got the guy on top of the ramp. He's looking over at the control tower. He's waiting <laughs> for the thumbs up there. And we get the cam checks in. The guy gets those wands. He's like here, and we go off into the map. Look at that. I just wave my beautiful wands, and now we're here on ritual. That timing, Colin, was impeccable. That was that was all right. That was, no, that's not more. That's more than right. That was really nice. Yeah, full credit. Teach sometimes, day, sometimes I'm, uh, sometimes I'm all right. Other times I just got to tell people that I refuse to start the game. <laughs> I, I refuse. Yeah. I mean, it's usually you who's in charge of starting the game, right, Colin? Am I right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I host you're, everything. You're Look, brother, I'm not lying to you. You know how many times people get like get into my lobby and they're like, "How you got one ping though?" I'm like, "You know how much money I paid to have this server built under my house." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right underneath the golf course, just outside in your back garden. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I know you like hosting games, Colin. You're a good leader. I know you care about the players. And if there is a Kenny in the match, I'm sure you delay the start just a little bit longer. Just so you can uh, extend the shotgun uh, battles, if you will, on foundation. Just a little bit longer. I, I, anything I can do, like I normally, back in the day when I was doing like an off stream for Pro League, I used to always wait until I'd get a kill on a player that I knew I shouldn't have gotten a kill on, and then I immediately backed it out, and then would launch the lobby. I'm trying to use that as, sil as like psychological warfare. And the one player I've never killed in the shoddy lobby, shout out to him one time, is Praised. Praised never, it took it way too seriously yeah, yeah. with me. Like, he saw me coming, he was like, nah, I'm playing this like $100,000 on the line. My man never let me even get one. <laughs> Team Queso right now seem to be playing exactly like that though. Sleeper back with power weapons in his hands. Double kill for him. Lovely making that a triple as well. But he also double made for him. Not over just yet is this first hill. 30 seconds to go. Someone's chasing down Chaos. Sure footed shotgunning. Absolutely from him once more. And had the pleasure of casting over him yesterday. And he was doing much the same thing actually, Colin. Um, he was quite loose, as was the word I used, right? And it was surprising to me. In, uh, Taylor, because it's usually Chappy and Solar who are scattering themselves across map and really yeah, awkward locations and finding those shotgun fights. But you no, know, Chaos is really enjoying himself at the moment, it seems like, in those aggressive positions. And I'm curious to see if he uh, continues that kind of fashion today. I'll tell you what, Summons right there has set his team up for a good little positioning. They're going to get flanked out twice, though. 
problems opposite end of the hill is going to have to be worried about getting 90 degrees shot on. Little miss roll there as he tried to probably take that cover. Rolls out again inside the spawn. Hits that little cubby corner shot for the down. Gets the kill. Has another 1v1 and wins that as well. Problems. Putting his squad on his back, making it a 3v1 inside of the hill. Now 3v3 over there as two players come off a respawn as fast as they can to try to get into the hill. Yeah, speed is the name of the game right now for these teams. Team Queso, a little bit of a score lead. And looks like he should be wrapping up this last team fight, pushing into that short spawn in front of problems. Good job from him staying alive, but he rolls straight into the left-hand back A position for Solar there, and he regains control along with the rest of his team of the objective. 50 seconds left on this hill, and based on the mini-map on the top right of my screen, Colin, we're in a very good position now to get a lot of points and even extend into the next one. Work bow out for Adverse, looking for the active, shoots at the ground, will get the splash damage kill on a Crystallize there. Good job, now looking across the middle towards Summons. We'll get the splash damage onto him or Problems. Couldn't tell which one of them it hit. We'll get the stick on the Problems too. Oh, good gracious. And Casa de Papel, they're going to be extraordinarily happy to find that they get the final 20 to 30 seconds on that hill and they have an early rotation over to P3. One turbo remaining and it's active. The clear sight line of this spawn. Not going to find that shot on problems, but the downs will continue to flow on through for Team Queso. Chavi actually runs out of downs. Confirmed 4v3 situation. All the Team Queso players are here. Ready to go in at a moment's notice, but not really going to have the opportunity here to go in as a team. Mm, our Solas. Solo, I should say. Not to confuse game attacks there. Is still on the flank, just lurking. Team Queso, don't really know who to shoot right now, Colin. There comes the fourth player. Chavi flows in. Solar's finally dealt with by problems and crystallize as they make sure they're no longer getting flanked. But by the time they get there, Colin, Adverse is there. The rest of the troops have arrived. And uh, an amazing job from Cassidy Bapel managing Team Queso there in front of them. Team Queso to me seems like they might have muddy comms or their comms might not be as clear. One of the things that always kind of shines through in Gears 5 is really just how good you are at communicating the information and the intel in front of you. The more information, the more intel, the better your possibilities to win these team fights are. And right now, we're going to have a 3v3 with a 1v1 on the opposite side if that fourth player goes over there. No. Player number eight, Adverse, is going for the new fragmentation grenade. He might actually go for the biggest flank I've ever seen in forever. Ooh. Unsure what's going to happen here. Shot on by Solar. Secondary player gets caught by Chavi. Now Problem's trying to make something miracle happen, but Adverse, like I said, on the flank now. Behind both problems and crystallize. Down is Love in, it. down is out, and a 115 to 43 Brothers. lead now. There's only one kill, but Solar, that push through the smoke screen to find the kill, then rolling back. That was so nicely played from him. Excellent job, the timing, the speed, and then Chavi followed up on the opposite side too. And so good to see from Cassidy Bapel. The potential we were talking about from Team Casa before. Casa also have that with the stars in their team, and they're really coming into their own now. Chaos, meanwhile, lurking right down the center, playing the perfect secret man, knowing where the next hill is. And the top bow to the right, pulling two. That's his target, Colin. He wants the power up and out of the game. Or even better, even more players than that. Look at this angle. Really catching Team Case off by surprise, but the court bow should be able to hold him at bay. Our summons actually pushes in with one kill, looking for the second. Team Queso should be able to slip on through unless Chaos has something to say about it. Remove yourself from my Sleeper back A gets one, gets the other one after the set, after the wall cancel there. And now Sleeper takes that cover in the middle of the hill, backing up. They cut the lead down to about 60 points, give or take a moment. Sleeper goes for a wrap shot, won't be able to get that one. Rotates back, side, back to the top side of the hill. And I was looking even further across the middle. There's the first kill. Flash grenade goes out for the front side from Proms. Hits that first L trigger. Now bouncing around, trying to stay alive as long as possible. Needs the help to come through. Crystallize needed to hit a big body shot onto Sleeper, or excuse me, onto Adverse. Won't be able to find that one. And again, they take over the hill, looking at 160 to 60 yet again. Yeah, Casa really finding the majority of the team fights now. Colin's clear as day. It's completely multi kills start coming through. Solar and Shabby start. Finding those ice-breaking kills that reset their team in front in terms of the number situation, regardless of the covers around. As we close out the final moments of this middle hill, we can see it's pretty much double the score, just about for Casa de Papel. But 
Team Queso have got the side of Ritual that they really want right now. Of course, that's the objective right in the corner. There's two players stack up. The short spawn is accounted for too. And they're holding it strong, but it's essentially a split push right now. 2v2. One for the short spawn and one for the hill. Frag grenades from pot problems should be slowing things down in just a moment. Problems is looking forward here. The torque bow has been picked up by Casa de Papel, Solar. Solaire. Now shot over the top. Won't hit that first one. We'll hit that cubby corner. Now looking for the plant one at the feet of this player. Flash damage onto him. Now looking for the second one to pick up. That's the chunk. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't try to throw out his flashbang early, but there's a pick again. Beautiful job. There's a third. One player would have been left alive, but we're going to get an execution. One of my favorite of all time, shooting that torque bow up, letting that thing just travel back down to the ground. And as it lands, it chunks them out. Beautiful job by Solar there. A couple of kills to his name, and they are right back into the driver's seat here in this hill. Team Case are about to funnel their way through the front door. Problem seeking a kill. Lurking round, making a second. Reaction shotting essentially on that. Up A attempt around the corner. Problems finding a third too. Lovely push from Team K. So, but hey, it's short-lived, really, isn't it? The hill is coming up now for the for the next rotation. They only got what five seconds out of the hill, Colin. And then they have to move once more. And what did they get? They got absolutely nothing. The, the spawns are going to flip. Are going to go to the other side for Cassidy Papel. They'll have the positional advantage. So, literally gets them nothing other than confidence. There's that push, Team K. So, Cassidy Papel set up now for the next hill nicely. Now pushing in, here comes both teams into this next fight inside of this hill. You're going to see one kill there by Chaos. Chaos looks down to the bottom. Summons has been tagged up. Summons trying to get up and do his drill. Sees the down come through, renegotiates his position to get the secondary down. And Team Queso will kind of finally win this first rotation for their team. And that's the first real big team fight victory. And it will net them a decent amount of points. Good job from Summons that. Clear comms from Team K, so at least in that moment, as he avoids the two hurdling towards him past that wall. Of course, he doesn't have X-ray vision. He needs to completely rely on his team, the audio, to give him the necessary information to stay alive there. Well done, Team Queso. Not too far behind now in school. They have caught up. It wasn't long ago that I did say that Cassidy Buffel had double score, remember? And now, four shots from Torbo for Solar. Active as well is this shot. One stick will connect on Sleeper. Good job keeping this player in the middle of bay as well. Numbers granted for Kassa. Frag grenade coming on through. Only 20 seconds left in the hill. Can they uh, actually convert this numbers advantage they had for a moment, Colin? And they definitely will keep into the next hill as we do get on into the later stages of Ritual. 177, 161. Still a lead for Casa de Papel. Sleeper rolling back. They're going to have to get into position here. Over this next retake of the middle hill, it's at that altar again, that first P1 as the hills are about to reset. Let's see what the next has spawned up. Solar trying to get shots onto Problems. Problems gets that secondary shot for the down and the out. Casa de Papel is inside that house at the altar behind those middle cubbies and we'll have a good defensive stand here to try to ward off Team Queso, but I mean, Team Queso not even breaking a sweat getting into it. I know. They're moving fast. They know how close this game is. Every opportunity counts at this level of play. And when these two teams especially are so neck and neck. Leafer has to be careful here. That he doesn't get flown up by two. Very typical push on this side. Who's going to make the first move? Javi. Jumping into that cover. Adver's trying to dive for cover himself. Three players stacking up, but the shots are so accurate from Team Kesa right now. It's a damage game in the middle of nowhere for these players. Zero cover around them, but they very quickly actually reach for it there. Adver's finds a kill too. Problem's trying to flank around, but it's headshot after headshot after headshot. Wow. Cassidy Bapel find the team victory, fight victory in the end, and also start building on this team score lead. Looking to get up over the 200-point marker here with the 37 seconds left on this hill. Morpho revving up for Chavi, looking across to the middle now. Won't be able to find anybody now. See three players knotted up coming in from the P2 side of the map. Over 200. Goes for a third pick. Won't be able to find that one. Won't even get splash damage. Summons finds one with an aid. Secondary for problems. Summons with a tertiary. Win on the hill. They need to make sure that they don't get killed to Chaos here. Chaos will step up right into the face of crystallizing at the chunk. Gotta be checking your corners there. All four players from Casa de Papel alive and at P2. 
Problems trying to go for a big chunk there. Won't be able to get that first one. It has no help in the area. He's going to go down. Numbers advantage still in favor of Casa de Papel. Up over 200 points as well. They're going to be sitting pretty into this next hill spawn. It's like deja vu all over again. Colin, Team Case will have an awesome team fight victory again with a 22nd point hill. And Casa are just waiting for the next one. And they're like, okay, kills was a great push and all, but... What's it got you? What's it netted? Absolutely nothing. Even Chaos was sat up again for a secret man in the most, uh, you know, obvious uh, rotation from the previous hill onto the next. And while the rest of his team are just ready to cap, sat up with loads of points of control for the eventual push that will come. And disappointing, I guess, for Team Queso in many ways in that sense. Casa, from strength to strength, they go. Now we see Chaos, another kill in his bank, 235 and counting, 65 points to go. Adver's backing away, they get the down. There's a little love tap out of them as well. Will spawned up and capped up, 35 seconds to go, getting him the 260, 270 marker, and another kill will start to come through. This is where, it, really honestly, I wish somebody would make the call out, you know? We just settle down. We don't need to be throwing ourselves one after the next at this hill. We can always roll back. Wait for all of us to spawn up and then go for the hill because they've given up a, a ton of points playing that way thus far. They're probably about to give up some more because there's one player called out. There's a second player called out. Revive comes through. Solar won't be able to get that stick, though. And again, Crystallize called out by his lonesome. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit concerned now in this in the later stages of this map, Colin, because, yeah, we touched upon the fact that Team Kaiso have been weak at, at different points of... Uh, their time, you know, in, in control, but this is, uh, it's, it's just back to basics. How many times are they going to push a 20 second hill and then be completely left out to dry for the next one? How, how often are they going to get caught out in, as individuals and secret man and so on and so forth? And it's resulted in this huge school lead now after uh, from a game that was actually quite neck and neck from the start. Cassidy Bapel are improving as time goes on as well. It's, uh, it's not a good sight to see if you're a, a Team Queso fan, that's for sure. Crystallize will maybe challenge the 1v at the top side of the map. 20 seconds to go for Casa de Papel to get the map number one victory. Excuse me. Roller trying to bounce in, getting that kill. I believe he gets a trade out right there. Now they get two more players out in front of him. Trying to finish both of them off as well. Will not be able to get enough damage to get down just yet, but they're going to move into position. There's another chunk and two seconds to go. That should be all she wrote. One player steps in, gets chunked out. Last player outside of the hill hasn't even had a chance to get in. That'll be the end of the map number one, Casa de Papel, with an intense and incredible map one victory. Yeah, great word to use, actually, intense, for sure. Uh, agreements on that one. Let's look at the stats. We didn't really pay too much attention. Six to 17, Crystallize, he got caught out plenty of times, but it was kind of just the entire team. 16 kills minimum across the board for Casa. The rest of them had 18 kills each. That's a lot, and it's quite evenly spread, and it goes to show how much of a team effort it was. And it was kind of won and lost on a team basis. Individually, the players didn't really go off to some extreme extent. You know, you've seen Barani go off on this map many times. You've seen Powers, of course, go off on Ritual, TJ Dyslexic. There's lots of individual performance that, performances that can occur in Ritual, Colin, and, that, and they can dictate who wins, who loses, for sure. Absolutely, uh, kind of like a hard carry, if you will. Casa did none of the sort. Evenly spread across the board with kills. Qualitatively speaking, their rotations are on point always waiting in the correct positions, you know, always kind of single file on the formation across the, the width of the map. Meanwhile, on the other side, Team Queso, great initial. We started off very confident in how they were doing on this map. We had high praise. We had three predictions out of three for them going into the series, but they kind of just fell off a little bit towards the end, got a little bit reckless. Their timing's a little bit off. The Torbo was lost many times, which Solar Advers here in this highlight did very well with. Chavi started to come into his own. And they started to sneak kills a lot of the times in situations where they really shouldn't be able to, Casa. But it was much more so Team Casa's concerns and issues with positioning, with timings and rotations. And again, that, that choice to push so many kills where there's just 20 seconds left, Colin. You don't need to do it. Back to basics. And then you can uh, play against a team that's playing as well as Casa right now. There's a part of me that almost feels like I needed to remember that, man, I, chaos to me, when I watch the way that he helps a team out, where he's rotating around, adding in extra damage, adding in extra shots, there's a lot of times where he goes unsung for his squad, and I was taking a look at some of these rotations from the side. 
of Casa de Papel, and they were just kind of leaning into wherever Chaos was on the map. And I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I said, man, I, I got to stop betting against my man Chaos in these kind of these very tight contested matchups because, I mean, he's as tough as a $2 stake, my brother. He is just he is one that is not going to go down easy. He's a practice individual, isn't he? Uh, we were kind of talking about that before with Kenny and whatnot and dealing with hard, hardships, uh, difficult, you know, highly competitive tournament situations. Chaos has seen it all, you know. He's he's, he's seasoned uh, like like anybody else. And yeah, I think that kind of smarts, that brains can allow him to kind of think a little bit ahead and kind of lean into those secret man positions. Just think about who is, you know, the king of secret mans, arguably, in Gears Esports is Rushies. Been doing it since the early Gears 4 and some of the most high stakes, high pressure situations. And he hits those Gibbs, Colin, every time. You know, it doesn't matter how high pressure the situation is. Uh, he always hits them. And it's because of that experience, that that confidence and chaos is clearly exuding that and kind of playing in a similar play style in many ways, getting a little bit loose and going for those uh, obscure kills here and there. And it's nice to see. It really is. There's, uh, again, just, uh, just to perform at his best still, you know, this late on into what is a very experienced uh, and highly driven uh, professional career in Gears. And I hope they do continue on going forward. But Team Queso... I hope that they can turn it around now because I know they can do better. Well, we go into next map. We go into an execution, and then we talked about it, the shortcomings in control. They're much better at execution. Do you see them turning it around here and tying it up one-to-one? -one? What, what is the biggest thing that can happen here in this map, too, that maybe gives you that cause to pause and think that they can, do, they can come away with it? Well, let's go to basics, first of all, in execution. It's all about team fights and those initials. And what are Team K so good at? They're great at initials. We saw that on Ritual today. We saw that on Ritual yesterday, mind you, as well. And they started off strong on both times on Ritual and kind of got like a quite a significant score lead in both situ in both instances. But it was those kind of the later parts of the respawn game mode in control that cost them. They can just leverage those initials over and over again, Colin, as, as basic as they want to be. But... Uh, with the strategies, but still really, really good with their shotguns, then check out is the perfect map for them. You know, headbutt literally into the platform uh, and go through the snipe if needs be, get sleeper, the snipe, that would be great. Absolutely. And summons has a huge amount of experience on this map as well, getting back to Gears 3. Leverage all of it. Team Queso can certainly find the victory here. Coming into that first platform fight, as you called out, Adverse is already down now, Solar as well. Rotating out toward the long shot. Three in, now four in, four out. 21 seconds for Ooh. Team Queso to get that first round. Talk about speed, my goodness. Wow. Pretty sure, yeah, it was Sleeper. That was essentially almost in the, the back checkout of their opponent. Right there within the first moments of that game. He literally flew across past platform like it didn't exist, going straight down the checkout to push the enemy and was a core component of that push. I wonder if they can keep that up though. It's gonna be tough sledding to keep it up. Coming in around number two. Everybody coming out toward the platform. First two in, first two out already for Casa de Papel. Two more to worry about. Incendiary drops the feet of Adverse. Second one goes out toward Chaos and he's burned alive. Back to back rounds. Shout out to the voice of God Shades of the late great Kobe Bean Bryant there with that beautiful Incendiary kill. 21 seconds, 22 seconds. It's like they're racing against themselves right now, just walking through their enemies. Nice little inside, yeah. From um, Sleeper. Boom. Right the chaos. Nice. All right, great job, Case Team Queso. They're definitely here to play, Colin. Absolutely safe to say. But Castle de Papel, they're not done on checkout. They want the 4v4. Sleeper again, you could see. Tri trying to see if he can actually throw himself again to the back checkout. No, he pauses for a second, but only a second. 3v2 in favor of Casa de Papel. Leaf is going to get angled out in the back. No, this should be a Casa round as they do respond. 23 seconds. Right, 21, 22, 23. Is the next round going to be 24 seconds, I wonder? I mean, they're What's just fighting on? this one, man. They're just, throw, they're just throwing hands back and forth. That's all this is amounting to right now. We're going into this next round. Round number four. Toby would like to see it be 24 seconds just because, you know, it would keep it going up one second per round, which would be an interesting statistic to hold. I, on the other hand, I want to watch somebody get absolutely chunked out into oblivion on the platform. One player jumps up. Chavi's going to get stunned out. They're going to be fighting out over the platform. First player goes down. Chaos is answered back. 3v2 now on the map. Sleeper down. Quick little revive. Adverse misses the flank, though, and problems. Last alive. He's down. He's out. 
Back to back rounds oh. for, excuse me. No, not back to back rounds. What am I reading? What am I reading? I mean, I read the timer. That's 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 why I made a noise in the mic. I'll be honest. Okay. 23 seconds. We were one second off having the 24. You know, just take a little second to just delay the kill and the down solo. Just get caught in that up A. It would have changed it. But anyway, it's not about us, Colin. It's about the teams. And Team Queso, 3 1 up right now. Looking so, so good in these shotgun battles. And Castle Evil Belt, they want it. You know, they're not changing up anything. It's an absolute cluster of shotguns here on both on platform and the middle. Problems comes around on the flank. Chaos. Oh, he just revived him. this player in front of Chaos. I have no idea how that appeared. 1v1 remaining. Crystallize. This is Adver's. Adver's right hand straight in for the game. Lovely back A. Castle Evil Belt still within a round's reach of their opponent. That's important. Keeping it within one of each other is oh so important just because of how close these rounds can be, how quickly one can turn on its side. He went for a meat shield. That's what happened. That's why I was so confused. Uh, why I was so confused over that, Colin. He went for a meat shield on the right because he saw his opponent with a meat shield right in front of him. He said he just gets a revive, and he was probably surprised himself, but it worked out. It definitely worked out. 3-2, let's go. Coming into the fight, another couple of kills coming through. 3v3 on the map right now. Shots on, looking for a secondary down. This is going to be Chavi. Chavi's going to get that down, but the revive comes out. Adver stuck between a rock and a hard place at the platform. Turning around, trying to burn on the chaos. Two down at four, Costa de Papel. Only one for Queso. Adver goes to the top side of the map. Last alive, 3v1. Tries to go back left hand, but he's going to go down. Sleeper. He's going to hit him with the old mind control. Yakow! There goes your head, big boy. He is, uh, he's certainly, uh, a Jedi right now, I guess you could say, is Sleeper. He's just throwing himself across the checkout as fast as he possibly can. Nine kills to his name after six rounds. And if he can't find a Gib straight away, you know, sometimes he falls back, but sometimes he just carries on going. And it seems to be uh, a checkout where that is the norm at the moment for both teams. They love getting it up close and personal on those 4v4s, and they don't limit their speed, which is surprising. Nothing's changed, no Lancers have come out. Instead, Sleeper still going to continue. Incense straight away for Chavi, though. And a checkout control as well for Team Queso. Looking for the long shot shot here from Proms. Won't be able to get that one. Now Proms looking for the right-hand side. Won't be able to find that one either. First death comes through onto Sleeper. 4v3. Long shot body shot onto Chaos. Hits that little bit of an L trigger, but not enough to get it down onto him. 2v2 here at the bottom side of the checkout lane. 2v1 up toward the platform. Reloads. We go to the wide angle. Shout out one time, Jay Ribs, for this. Problems looking for the angle there on the chaos. It's the body shot on a one. Won't be able to get enough damage. This should be a Costa de Papel around, and it is indeed. Back and forth we go. 4 3. Yeah, not an ideal situation to be in when you have the snipe in a 3v4. Honestly, the one thing you want to do is just leverage the snipe and leverage the power up and, and stay away from your opponents. But right there, they were locked into the middle checkout with no escape. Two players ready in front to push, which of course they eventually did. Unfortunate sight for those guys, I'm sure. Four to three. It's neck and neck, the checkout. I'm just waiting for a strategy to, to, to be changed up here. But both teams still just so much confidence in their ability to shotgun. And now I say that, it has changed up a little bit. Cassidy Babel was sitting back with the Lancers a little bit more, focusing a little bit more towards the checkout. Incense throw Woo! in one will connect 3v2. As Chaos and Chavi find a kill, we trade downs though. Still, Sleeper. And his demo were in it, but no, the reinforcements quickly come up from behind. Castle de Papel, find the round in 25 seconds, though. All tied up here, baby. All tied up here. We are doing as best we can to stay in with all this action as they go back and forth. Coming out here into round number nine as it is tied up four to four. They'll be looking for somebody to throw a difference of opinion, a different strategy out. Both teams sending all four players out here. One player standing up, throwing out a very early flash. Now a secondary and a tertiary comes out. Chavi using the front side of the platform. Downs coming through, left, right, and center. Summons down, sleeper down. Chavi with a third now for the kill feed for Casa de Papel. And now a fourth. One more round, and Casa de Papel will be up 2-0. Hmm. Nervous times now for Team Queso. Just think back to the start of this map. Team Queso was so dominant in these shotgun battles. But Cassidy Papel, they've changed it up. 
a lovely triple on screen here for Xavi and a great example as the fear that might be going on in Team Case's minds right now. They have to win this round and the next one. It's so important because Casa are on point. Shots out early. Carol comes through. Team Queso in a 3v4 situation. Xavi goes for the up A after the back A. Gets that kill. And, I mean, this might as well be all over and done with. They get the four-man clean sweep. And now, the hopscotch. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Don't you dare try to take that execution away from me. I swear to God, put that thing on a replay. We're going to show it 15 times. We're going to show your rage quit 15 times. I'm calling it. Maybe five. But we'll be back right after this with Escalation Map number three between Casa de Papel and Team Queso. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gears Pro League Day number two. We are embroiled between our final match of the night between Team Queso and Casa de Papel and... Right now, Toby, I'm feeling a little hot under the collar. I'm a little heated under the seated boy, because rage quit on me. Take your executions like a man. Mm. You know, I thought you were going to talk about everyone's predictions then. I mean, nope, not looking too sweet, are we? I take my I prediction guess. L's like a man. I don't rage quit out of that. You, you, you can't true, rage quit out true. of it. Come on now. Yeah, fair enough. Very fair statement. I'm not a fan either. I mean, as much as I like the gears omen, Especially in blue, you know, in, in the full screen, but nah, I prefer the Gears gameplay. And uh, Casa are certainly delivering plenty of that. Xavi here on our screen with a lovely triple. Back A after back A. Just timing for him, it seems like. Not too difficult, making it look easy. 16 to 5, by the way. I just noticed right at the end. Yeah, too oh, busy yeah. being enthralled into the performances in front of us, but he went 16 to 4. I can't believe we didn't point that out during the cast. Certainly my bad. Now Usually we the one get to the start chance. Him. Uh, we get the chance to see our first different escalation map of the night. Uh, we get to see Harbor. What are your thoughts on this? Because because the way the checkout played with the mid platform, with Costa de Papel figuring out a way to start dominating that fight toward the end game, is that bad news bears because of the winch fight on Harbor? Yeah, interesting dynamic and comparison there. I mean, yeah, maybe this that maybe for sure. I, and the the concern for me most of all is that Harbor requires a lot of cohesion and um, uh, teamwork from from teams even in those close call battles because it's kind of that dynamic between one's on Wench, one is on uh, of, of Stern. How do we send the players? Oh, we've just lost Stern. Where are we going? Which side are we pushing? Et cetera, et cetera. And there's kind of that push and pull between the two locations. Then you have the flank. There's lots of community, you know, lots of lanes simply put in Harbor where you have to consider where players are. Comms have to be very, very on point. Team case for moments. You said, I think you said muddy was was the description for the yeah. for the mic usage, perhaps on, on ritual. And yeah, I saw it too. And for checkout, Cassidy Babel side to just show mechanically that they're extremely good, not only on control but also execution. Just when Team Case have started both maps off so strong, Colin. So yeah, a lot going against Team Case right now. Safe to say, and I kind of trust Cassidy Babel to navigate those situations a little bit better, perhaps than Team Case. Between, say, Winch, Stern, choosing where to go, etc. Their intuition certainly was proven uh, solid from Checo and how they played that. Xavi, 16 to 5, throw him anywhere. I mean, he's clearly enjoying his initials right now. One of my favorite things that used to happen on Harbor back in, back in the day when I was, you know, trying to be an idiot and compete, even though I have no thumbs whatsoever. I always kind of played a secondary or tertiary role going into that mid winch fight. And one of my favorite things I always heard was if we come out on top, like if you're the last person alive, but everybody else is dead, just go to their home. And I'm like, I'm not good in one V ones. They were like, yeah, but then they have to look at you at least like if you're decapping mm. their home. And I always find it interesting nowadays, how much more of a strategy that is where whoever's winning that winch is over rotating to that first half home hillside. Whether they get a recap on it, they're usually at least trying to go for a decap or challenging up the next set of respawns. I love to see that because I, I A, enjoy the aggression, but B, because of the size of Harbor, it's buying your team time to come off of respawn and try to get set up at a defensive stand, get set up at B, get set up at the winch, find a trap to make or lay for your opponents. Those are the things that I really think can come to fruition for a lot of these teams if they can just pick out these little, these little nuances. See what happens though between Casa de Papel and Team Queso. Early kill out by problems. And now a secondary one. 
Only one being answered back by is Chaos. Crystallize will have to settle his tea kettle. Sleeper with the back A though, gets the down there onto Chaos, and that should be a winch fight win as of now for Team Queso. It is, and they got the B Hill locked in too. This is a this is nice for Team K, so it has to be said. They can slow things down finally after a really quick checkout. Look at that, though, for a nice camera. Kutsi of Ribs. Cassidy Papel are throwing themselves up the stern as a team, but then meeting nothing but their Greystones. Immediately dropped. Team K so quickly overextending, looking for the triple cap. Chaos lurking once more, not able to find the gib he was hunting for. In a lot of trouble. And it looks like Team K so will actually convert this into a round. No one's going to reach in time. Impressive. All right, that, I like that. I really do. A Cassidy Bell, clearly sticking with the strat of speed to try and respond fast. Not going to work out, though, as Team Queso thwarted that immediately. But definitely signs of life right now, Colin, for Team Queso. And that up top initial is certainly a, a situation that Team Queso can take advantage of and also choose to try and slow it down as well in, the, in terms of positioning from the winch and stern lantering down onto the spawn and down bottom for this uh, roster of Cassidy Bell. So if Boltok for Boltok and then Retro to Retro is is Vanilla Vascar, is uh, Boltok <laughs> for Boltok and then Retro for Retro, so on and so forth, is the same placements on both teams. Can we call that Hardly Harbor? Because <laughs> it's hardly anything different. It's just the same weapon. Come on. I love it, yeah. I'm working yeah, for, for sure. something, baby. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, what, where are you going with that? And then, yeah, that makes sense. For sure. Look at this, though. Quickly changing up, aren't we? On, on the winch, Cassidy with help. Fly through there. Summons again wins his 1v down bottom, though. Has to be said. Very big component. Of course, the 1v's in escalation. But Summons will not really lead to much there. It's a team game, despite being perhaps one of the most well-known singles players in the game. It will not lead to much. Chaos with the Boltok in hand finds Sleeper. Two caps now for Kassa. But Crystallize quickly throwing himself up the stern. We're gonna try to get this next fight win. Two to one hill advantage in favor of Casa de Papel for just a moment. Chaos is mounted up here just outside of Team Queso's secondary half home. He'll go for the up A and gets the trade out. 3v3 on the map right now. Xavi will move up into the top side of the winch, getting shots on into the B hill. Gets it out from behind. He's gonna get challenged here by Problems. Problems tries to slide across, is stunned out. Two shots in, two shots out for Xavi. Pulls the Boltok to go help the B hill yet again. Doesn't hit a single shot, but not really necessary when Adverse is picking up big body shots there. 2v1 here toward the winch onto Chavi. Can Chavi stay alive long enough to help his teammates? Yeah, he's under so much pressure right now, but rolls enough or rolls away early enough, I should say. Then pushes a little bit too quick. Not too much in the communication are those two there. It seems like Crystallize will find Sola as he try to flank through as well. Advers on his own. Still a score lead for Casa, but they're losing the home hill at this point. And Team Queso absolutely looking a little bit better in this round. Try to get a little finish here. Team Queso getting neutralized in front of him. Sleeper on the flank. Xavi and Toler going down momentarily, going for the team revives. Now three players wolf backing toward the back side of the hill. They're going to get another kill, 166 and counting. They're going to be able to overtake this point advantage here momentarily. Nobody able to push up to the B-Hill just yet. Three players coming down the pipeline. Problem bouncing around as much as he can, trying to stay alive. They need to hit that secondary shot. They do just that. Sleeper now with the Boltok in hand, going for the reload. Six shots left in the chamber. One connects with Solar. Second one connects there. Third one connects with Advers as well. Flash grenade's going to come out. They're going to try to get the stun and then push one player inside of that position. That's going to be Summons now crystallized behind him. 200 points and counting. The longer they hold on to this, the more solidified it becomes for Casa de Papel. Needing to push across. They're going to get the kill on the summons. And Toby, that's a great comeback. Team Queso don't solidify the triple cap domination. And Casa de Papel, they make them pay for it. This is going to be one to one in map three. Yeah, some really good moments there from Team Queso in that round. More impressive in many ways than parts of the very quick first round. But no, Casa de Papel turning it around in the end. And especially that team fight there on that B fight. Uh, lots of bull talking, but sometimes, especially with great utility usage, you just need to get in there with a Nasher. You can't risk uh, the usage of a bull talk in a passive play. You have to close the gap on that on that long wall of harbor, given the cover that it provides. And oftentimes a push and a fade like that could have been a little bit easier, a little bit better, a method, if you will, of, of attacking that, given the 
time pressures involved, but nothing too much uh, changing uh, in terms of weapon placements, and I don't think there should be any much uh, or too much change up top either in terms of where the numbers go. Question is, are Team Case are going to find the same success as they did in the first round or not? Flash grenades out toward that mid winch fight, looking for the shots on. L trigger misses second. Hip fire gets a big shot on. Now the chunk comes out. Two down and dead for the side of Casa de Papel. Now three down and dead. Summons once again with a big 1v1 win. Should be a quick round here. Team Queso already in the A hill. Summons inside of the B hill. They're going to be able to get the neutralization. They'll have one player to contest with. That's going to be Chavi. He's going to hit that ramp. He's going to fly up into the top of the side. He'll go down two to one. Beautiful round by Team Queso. It was, it was. And while all that was going on up top, Summons continues to dominate in his 1v down bottom. That time round, he was getting pushed all the way in his side, Colin. But Summons holding true to his gun. He was holding his shots and just making sure he connects with those final uh, remaining pallets to, to down his enemy. And he really does have the number of his opponent right now. And didn't actually track who exactly that was. But the most important factor is that Summons, whenever we switch to his camera, Colin, Seems to be no one around him but just a downed body or no, or just a corpse. And it's a really big component. While uh, the up top fight seems to be a little bit closer going back and forth between the two teams. Last grenade's out yet again. Xavi will answer back with the first down of his own. Problems is going to bounce around. He's going to go down now. Down and dead. Sleeper up top. Needing to try to win a fight here. He's going to get shot in the back. Beautiful turn and burn on the road. He's straight right into that player's face. He's full red, though. Has to be careful not to go down in this situation. One player from Casa de Papel at the A-Hill going for the neutralization. Retro in hand. Tons of damage get put out. Crystallize is going to go down. Now the cleanup might come through. There's the beat shield. No time for problems to get in. Back to back we go. Round of five. First round of the second half is about to ensue. That was a close one, wasn't it? Look how close Keegan is there from breaking that one. My goodness me. And you know that time, and actually the player who is uh, handling the retro on the home hill and selecting the weapon right now uh, is Chavi, and he was the one who defeated Summons in the 1v down bottom for the first time, and look what happened. Quickly rotating over to the hill to get the triple cap, and yeah, absolutely important for Chavi, especially given his, uh, his uh, absolute potential in the 1v situations, even against the old guard, if you will, in the single situations like Summons. Really cool to see as we go into the second half. We've got a really, really good map on our hands here, Colin. Yeah, we indeed have a good one on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Rolling out of spawn here, coming to that mid winch fight. Everybody will nod up yet again and go for another big team fight victory before they push over to the opposite side of the map. Cool. Incense thrown in from Adverse from down bottom. Oh, actually, yes, down bottom. Look where he is. All the way from down bottom, straight onto winch connection. What a throw that was. Summons realizing that he now needs to make up for that a little bit, perhaps. He's pushing his 1v, trying to go wide. Adver's holding his ground. Meanwhile, the fight continues up top. Summons is eventually pinched as a result of Adver's effort up top, or rather throwing the inside up top to influence things. Quickly ended up to, to the result down bottom as well, helping him back too. Such a close score. So much pressure being applied by both teams here up top. Chaos trying to revive his teammate problems, getting revived himself, but Crystallize holds his nerve. And two kills now on the kill feed run. He's going to try to get this next one to go. Chavi will be bottom side of the hill. Up toward that F hill. Wrapped up completely by Team K. So Casa de Papel will not have a chance to push into the F hill either and try to take over the 2-1 to one hill advantage. So... Team Queso, they might sit back on their laurels here and just allow themselves to accumulate as many points as possible before pushing back in to the next fight or allowing their opponents to push back into them. Yeah. Slowing down gameplay right now for a second. The Casa don't want any of that. They do finally push up the ramp. Lots of utility usage, but also lots of downs. Great shot down from Chaos. Sleeper will respond in kind. But still, a 2v2 fight rages on on Stern. The angle coming on through to Chavi as he runs out of down. Solar as well loses his life. And Team Queso, yet again, another stronghold onto the E Hill and the up top fight. And they're overextending now for a potential triple. They don't necessarily need to go for it, but they're going to try to triple cap domination main Sue here momentarily. Chaos is going to try to get to the top side of the map and get a neutralization on E. Stop this from going forward, and that's going to be Chaos inside of the hill. Gets the kill and gets the decap, keeping themselves alive for now. 
Yeah, four now with the asterisk, right? Because there is quite a hefty score lead still, Team Queso. And they have regained control of the D-Hill. Ten seconds to go to wrap this one up. We get the first round on the board on their side for the second half. It will come through. Lovely job, Team Queso, once more. They're really finding their footing a little bit now, aren't they? Didn't have a too great of a time in the initial, right? A fantastic incense from Advers previously. But boy, did they respond well. Back and forth we go in rounds, Colin, between the two teams here. And it's a mix You got to remember, match. Team Queso is staying, trying to stay alive here, Toby. That's a, they, they got to win this. It's not a, they can't go back and forth, baby. They got to find a way to finish this bad boy off. Mm, that's a good point as well. Do you carry on just trading initials, right? Or do you actually place a weapon uh, to, to a, create a, a situation, a battlefield that you're more confident in? Uh, for me, I think they're most confident in, in slowing things down and having those moments where you have the E-control, you have student control and can lance it down the players of Cassidy as well because I don't think they've been too successful as a, as a team of three or four pushing up their ramp. Yeah, Team Case are always successful in the fence, so let's see if they can recreate that at least. Coming into that mid-winch fight yet again, always got to be lurking on this big close-range fight. Big shots in from Sleeper, needing one more now, bounces back. Down comes through. Looks like they're going to try to continue to go on the flank. They're going to win this fight, as a matter of fact. Team Queso might pressure across and try to get shots on the Advers. Have enough players alive to try to collapse onto him. Incendiary gets thrown out towards Summons. Advers is going to be caught between a rock and a hard place. Chaos is up now. Summons inside of the hill. Has that retro. Will throw the flash. Pulls the retro back out. Adds as much damage as he can. Needs a secondary shot. Gets it to go. Triple cap domination may go down here. Indeed, it is going to go down four to two and one round away from staying alive in this matchup for Team Queso. Clinical, absolutely clinical from Team Queso right now on this map. 54 seconds it took them to navigate through the up top fight and all get down bottom to make sure they get the triple cap locked in. And they're starting to edge away a little bit in the, in the scoreboard, if you will, our Team Queso with the kills and whatnot. They haven't really needed to do anything too special either. It's kind of just back to basics, if you will. Weapon placements are nothing too unpredictable, right? They haven't done any crazy flanks through the middle to try and flank the home hill yet. They've just stuck to their guns. They've remained confident in their ability to win the up top fights the majority of the times. The result is that they finally broken the deadlock and had a two round advantage for the first time in this game. Snipe, though, placed down middle as Cassidy of Hell want to change things up. Also, this is where you look at Team Queso. This is kind of where they struggled. Every time they started to get some momentum on their side, it was like they weren't able to capitalize on it. They weren't able to hold the momentum in their favor for very long. If they can hold it here for just one round, they win it and send us to a map number five, another control map here. Shots out early, summons will go down. Casa de Papel will have the two to one hill advantage in this one. And now I'm gonna settle in and wait for the retake from Team Queso to come out. Solar under a lot of crash here. Sleeper trying to get up their ramp, trying to capitalize on the damage, but he's turned up eventually and taken down. That quick pick attempt of the snipe failed. Chaos has later picked up that rifle from the ground and has it in his hands. Summons though, a kill on Chavi could open up the way for a push up top. Be careful, Chaos is lurking with that snipe. Great body check on the problems, making sure he does not get up that ramp. Team Queso, oh, look at that front angle. He checked it, Colin. He's not going to get the shot he needed in the end. 2v2 up top of the moon. Flash grenade goes across. Chaos will go in for the slide. Won't be able to get the shot that he wants to connect, but here comes the reinforcements from both squads. Kills are huge. That could have been a big problem right there. He dang near chunked his teammate with that back A. Now they're going to be pressuring out. Crystallize is going to go down on that mid winch. Casa de Papel in commanding lead. Make go in for the shutdown here. Only one pro per person left in their way. One problem to solve, and that's problems himself. They're going to be in for the triple cap domination. They're going to try to make this four to three sleeper. Will not make it to the E Hill in time. Good round back answered by Casa de Papel. Good to see. Trying to return it to some equilibrium there. Yeah, on our screens. 17k damage right now for sleeper. Insane stuff. Truly. Really sets himself apart from the rest of the playing field amongst him, right? Nothing else too crazy in terms of the stats here appearing on my screen, but I do wonder, weapon placement wise, are either team really gonna test the water with something else? A disable coming in actually for Casa. So they kind of just want to force it to a final round in that sense, right? They haven't held it for a uh, 
potential future round, right? You know, if they can just win one more without that. Sleefer surely will kind of match that now, as given that they're on map point here. 4-3, yeah. disable placed out, ladies and gentlemen, by both squads. No incendiaries to be able to use by either squads as well. So, Shock versus Retro. Casa de Papel with a Retro. Team Queso with a Shock to be able to use. Long shot in the middle of the map. Will basically be a secondary thought process as we have a 2v2 here in the mid winch. Big shots in by Chavi. Needed to hit one more there to maybe get that fight win. Solar up top, looking to get a 1v1 win here. Bouncing around. Needs one more big connection. Bounces to the left. Tries to use the back A. Won't be able to get it. Gets the little side shot to go and gets that kill. Chavi's in a bad way. He's in a pretty tough 1v1 to have to win. Surprise, they're going to let him stay in it, but they stay in it long enough to allow him to win it. Bottom side of the map, Chaos is going to get a big chunk out. Now it's going to be crystallized going down, and off to the races we go over to the D-Hill for a chance to make it 4-4. Can Advers hold on over by the D-Hill? Seems like not, but the rest of his team absolutely can. Here comes the domination. It will be going to a final round here on Escalation Harbor. Casa de Papel claw their way back with their own two rounds in a row. 52 seconds took for them to win that one also. And again, can't rely on these initials, I think, between these two teams. You have to deviate a little bit away from that and not have your entire game plan based on that. Incense both back in play for both teams. Another variable for them to consider in the chaotic moments here of the ninth round. Ninth round, final round of escalation here. If Casa de Papel can find a way to get this one away from Team Queso, by hook or by crook, 5-4, they will get a 3-0 victory over Team Queso. Queso needs this round just to stay alive. Torque Bow and Longshot both placed out on the map now. A ton of power weapon potential to be picked up and used by either squadron. And how huge would it be if Cassidy Bavel win 3-0? They're absolutely on the precipice of doing that. One more initial is all it could take. Advers with the incense summons. Quickly picking up the snipe, though. Football was still up top. The fight rages on. On the winch, a double coming through. Or I should say, Chavi finding the kill. Snipe is up top, though. The summons and Torpo in the hands of Sleeper. Shot over by Summons, looking to try to get a shot onto the F-Hill. Two to one hill advantage in favor of Casa de Papel right now, because they went home to home. Moves it down over the middle, sliding in. Summons gonna get that revive. Solar, last player alive over here on this side of the map. The player's pushing in toward F, body shot on Adverse. Adverse is gonna be full red, he's gonna go down. It's two down and dead. It's gonna be an awkward situation as both of the power weapons are playing up top here. Long shot in for body shot there. Sleeper gets the pick onto Chaos as well. Casa de Papel needing to try to get two kills here, only getting the first one for D. Trying to hold off and stave off a possible triple cap domination. There's the down. Here they push in for triple cap domination. Solar has to get inside of the E-Hill, get the touch. Sleeper bounces all the way away and is trying to stay as safe as humanly possible, but he might be stuck between a rock and a hard place now. That's Sleeper gone. Snipe and Torbo no longer under Team Queso's control. The points are actually not too different between the two teams, Colin. It's certainly not over yet if Casa de Baval can regain some ground now and get back his home hill, but it's a 3v3. Summons has a shot right in his back pocket. He's going to try and throw it. Fails the first time. Now it finally goes in. Blocking a cover, but doesn't even matter. Casa still continue to push on forward, but Team Queso are still lighting up the kill feed blue. Crystallized with a double, and that could be huge as the score starts to build even further for Team Queso and a pinch coming in for the triple cap potential. Sleeper Solar has to try to take one of these. Crystallized back A won't get that to go. Solar bounces back up to the top, is trying to mount up a little bit of offense. Hits a big body shot there on a sleeper. Miss roll! Sleeper shuts him down. This could very well be the end of the round as two players will have to push against the three of Team Queso. And they just want to stay alive up here. They want to be able to hold on to this and be able to win this round in a two to one hill fashion and force a map four between themselves and Casa de Papel. Casa have a snipe and an incend and some utility and a dream to take the series on this map. Let's see, one more push to find the E-Hill and then they need to get to the final hill and the home hill too. Trying to get across the map. Problems, are gonna see one player slide into his right hand. Won't be able to get the shot on. He's gonna go down. They're at D, they're at E. 
Can they get to F? That is the question at hand. They're going to have two players pushing down that track. Now Crystallize pushes out, goes for the one-shot chunk, rolls back. They're going to roll into the hill. They don't make it in time. Team Queso get their first map victory here in our final match of the night. It's 2-1 now after map three. How close was that, Colin? Wow. Just in the closing moments, two players literally have to roll in because of time is so limited despite the damage that is thrust upon them by the one player. So, so close, but really hard fought for and well-deserved from Team K. So there in that closing round at the very least. As they just went from triple cap scenario to holding off back up top, losing power weapons in the process in those closing moments. But still, they held out for long enough. An extra special level of effort employed by all the Team Queso players to make sure that they've bought enough time for their team to win by score. It was a close one. It was dicey. I genuinely thought Casa had just a little bit more time, you know, available for them to save that round there with the triple cap because the downs came in quite early, didn't they? I think it was summons and, and one of the player that got downed with at least 20 seconds to go, right? Until the points were going to come locked in. And so with well, that in mind, I mean, Casa had all the opportunity in the world there to try and find their way across the map. I love the way that Summons used the long shot in the final round. It wasn't necessarily a world beater or a round ender. He basically was just going for body shots to give his teammates the easiest possible fights everywhere around the map. And I think that's what comes back to be the thing that helps them win that final round. I don't believe even one bullet was wasted. I think everything was a body shot for him. He might have hit one heady, but every time I see so I saw someone's fire, he got that to go. He got a body shot. He got some kind of damage out, so his teammate had an easier time winning their next fight. Those are the little plays. Those little differences. Yes, you can go for headshots all day and, and get that kind of uh, montage real play, but more often than not, just making your teammates' lives easier is usually the play that's going to help you win the round, win the game necessarily. Mm, yeah, so true. Speak of the devil, someone's doing such a great job in this round to hold out. Chaos as well. It's a nice little push from him. It was sad that the, that particular back A didn't come in. The solo. Was this the misroll situation? Yes. No, it wasn't. There was a no, there we was a misroll at the very least, wasn't it? Hey, no, it wasn't. I could talk about alternate controls all day. But that was 1-1-B one, one that absolutely, if it went the other way, would have had a huge difference, I think, in that particular round's outcome. Uh -oh. Adver's playing well, I think. Actually, yep, here it is. All red solo. <sighs> it's just the missed roll. He was going for the up A, you know? Like, I don't think he'd have necessarily reached it in time. Sleep was quick, but this was the roll-in moment. Both players getting in there in time. Well, not in time. Definitely not in time, but definitely accurately. You know, right in the center did both roll, holding hands, almost like gymnastics, but... Came down to two seconds, and now we're going into Regency Control. Curious to see how Regency Control is going to play out for these two teams, between these two teams. I mean, 300 to 185 on that ritual was pretty dominating. Casa de Papel doing everything in their possible power to make sure it wasn't an easy sale for Team Queso. And, and I'll harken back to something you brought up, and I want you to discuss it at length if you want to. Is it going to make it worse that Team Queso was fighting over those 20 to 25 point hills in map number one? Are they going to try to go for the same thing? Or do you think that they'll learn their lesson? And if they are still going for those 20 to 25 point hills, is that really a death nail, especially on a map the size of Regency when it comes to control? Well, for me, it was just a back to basics kind of thing. They they know okay. they're better than that. You know, making silly mistakes, arguably, where they go for the 20 second hills over and over again. Um, and I think they proved that on Escalation because they were very, very organized as a team, I want to say. Yeah, the initials continued to go back and forth, but the mid-rounds, Team Queso were excellent there. So many defensive um, formations were set up up top on Stern and Winch, making sure they don't lose a single player in the process. The power up and collection was great. Someone's was winning his 1Bs consistently down bomb, so clearly he was playing well, as we saw in the cameras and the highlights too. So... With that in mind, I don't see any reason now after them clearly warming up and coming and joining uh, into the series in a way that we expect from Team Queso that they should play and, and make the same mistakes on Control of Regency. Uh, it's, it's like it is a very much a basic thing. They're a pro level team con. They shouldn't have to make these consistent mistakes over and over again before realizing, hey, maybe we shouldn't. Um, and hopefully they've learned their lesson now uh, coming into Regency. They can carry on those awesome initials from the Winch and Stern and also continue to collect power weapons as they did on Asuka. This will be an interesting one, uh, honestly, because of the simple fact that I think that 
as you load into this Regency and you know that there's that M bar ever lurking up top, you know how many how many rotations there are. Because do you go for the power weapon? Do you go for those nades and the shock down in the middle of the map and then try to just take over the Rose Garden? A lot of differenting, differentiating opinions on how to play this map. One thing is for certain, though. Whoever chiseled out those marble statues is an incredible, <laughs> un unbelievable, <laughs> amazing artist. That was an awesome segue, fair play. Boom! It's some, it's, oh, that's there. Yeah, now that I'm looking at them, yeah, I think I have to agree with you on that one. Never really thought about that, but yeah, it's a beautiful map, isn't it? Down to every single detail. I mean, you know me, map. brother. I'm a, I'm a lore head. I'm an idiot when it you comes are, to yeah. the story and the, the, yeah. the deep and the depth of this world and everything that's been put into it. So we'll see here what comes out of this first initial roll out of spawn. Looks like we're going to have the 3-1 split from both squadrons. Grenades are going to go out. Robin's going to the back side of the Rose Garden. He's going to bounce out to the right side. Now he's going to bounce that back into the fight here momentarily. First down comes through. Chaos gets a second down. That's two down and dead for the side of Team Queso. Three down and dead, as a matter of fact. Team Queso, as they respawn, will go for the M-Bar and will probably try to rotate over to the point. Nope. Guys, um, the opposite side of the map is where point two spawns. Um, coming over here, kind of cool, like really cool. But if you fail, you're gonna respawn on the wrong side. You know what, Toby? I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna be over here. Yeah. No, it's a really good point, and I think they've just selected the right hand advantage, I guess, for this last push. But you make a really solid point, and I think I'm with you on that front. You know, choose the left hand if you're gonna have to. There's only 20 seconds left in the hill. Yeah, you know? it's a really good point. Absolutely, Chavi will find problems. The sleeper really want to risk the Embar going for this? Come on! I don't know. I mean, there is one flank coming in, but that's the Embar last for what? 15 seconds when you could see Cassidy Babel angling from the next hill. I mean, that's the kind of stuff for me that it just shouldn't slide at this point. You know, this we've had such a close series. Just keep holding the M bar. Maybe consider where your teammates are and just pause for, for a moment. Frag I grenade. Mean, you need bad buzz onto someone speaking more power. Than Crystal Eyes is going to get shot in the back by Chavi. Chavi's going to get the call out that one player is coming through the middle doorway. It's the secondary shot for the down as well. Inside of the hill, one player from the side of Team Queso. They'll get some initial points, get eight points for their squadron, but immediately Casa de Papel, they take it right back over. They're going to be up over a 50-point differential here in the next few moments. Everybody from Team Queso, middle of the map or greater, and this will be an interesting play call. They're going to be able to push back into this and get a full team wipe. Or will Casa de Papel stand strong again and set down Team Queso? Good lances. Even better nades from Advers once more. That thwarts the push, immediately shutting it down. Our uh, Casa de Papel might even reach a 100 point mark advantage here. Casa are looking so good from the moment we hit go on Regency, but might be a thorn in the side. Short spawn actually was gained for Team Queso despite that, and that was perhaps a, something of an oversight actually for Casa. Too busy pushing well ahead, Colin, to find those remaining kills. And perhaps the next spawn as well. Short spawn for the next hill. Maybe, just maybe. Yeah, I feel that has actually paid off for them. There's the, not many points left, actually, on the last hill. Not many points left in the last hill. One player from Casa de Papel are already in the next position, and they have the close respawn to really work with here. Maybe going to be able to push back into this next fight. Two players are going to the top side of the map as of right now. Two players going into the bottom side. Let's see who goes with the initial push. It's going to be 2v1 down to the bottom side. Player four looking to try to get one kill. Won't be able to get either of them. He's going to go down. It's going to be a trade out. There's the nades, though. The double kill from Chaos is in and through and true. Chaos will settle his tea kettle right inside of that hill. They have the close respawn. They've got hill coverage. And they are just going to mount more points in this situation. Absolutely. So three shots remaining for Chavi. And Team Queso have to continue to traverse this treacherous, although beautiful, garden in front of us. 60 seconds left on this hill. People lurking towards that short spawn. And two players at the front. One of them going to get a headshot immediately. The second one, lucky. Just about getting a haircut. Crystallize now, 2v1. Or being 2v1 there. Short spawn. That's the all important fight, though, as well. Advers continuing to do well. Finding one. The damage on Sleeper. Both players full red. But quickly, the reinforcements are there. Casa de Babel are working so well at the moment, Colin. There's one unit. The rotation over to this, this hill was beautiful. Everyone was there well in time for the next hill, and they had the M bar. 
and the majority of the points from the previous hill. Cassidy and Bell are dominating right now. I mean, that's the 100 point lead you see already on your screen and already getting bigger as every single moment passes 140 to 30, 140 to 20, 139 to 20, excuse me. They couldn't get that one more point before they left the hill to make it an ice even number, but they are already rotating through the middle of the map. They know the next point is at top T table, B4 in this map rotation. Shot out by Summons. Won't be able to catch the first one. Now looking for that player behind the cubby. He's going to get shot on at first. Here comes a flash to try to stun him out as he tries to run away and skedaddle away from the fire. Turns, starts to rev up. Looking for the burn. Won't be able to find that one. Now looking for the player at the backside of the T-table. Neutralization is in. Big team fight is also breaking out as well. Casa de Papel with two players down and out. Team Queso finally losing one to the fray, but they will be able to take over the hill for a moment. Adver's not able to escape. Team Queso now. A fresh slate, you might argue, to actually set up on this hill and finally gather a substantial amount of points, but number two on our screen, Chaos, is lurking in the center, waiting for reinforcements. Problems is aware that someone... Oh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's absolutely not. Chaos has oh, almost had the opportunity to push up and get the gib in the back. Look at all these team... Uh, Casa de Papel players just swarming problems there in the, in the center. That's their game plan. Sleeper for Red, he's been caught out too. And Lincoln, you miss it. Everyone has just been wiped off the map for Team Queso. Casa de Papel make it look so easy just when we thought Team Queso could get quite a few more points on the board. Just absolutely shredding. They are hitting shots right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is an impressive sight to see here on Regency. Going into that next hill, though. 150, 160 and counting maybe before that hill spawns at the bottom right. 20 seconds left. So you see, I think Team Queso has to start trying to pressure out now, not giving up any more point advantage over to the side of Casa de Papel because it's getting ugly. It could also be, it also could get a lot worse if they were to continue to hold on to these hills moment after moment. It could. Shot grenade in the hand of Chaos. One good shot placement could be all she wrote for this first team fight. Crystallized though, immediately getting the first blood. The second as well, Sleeper with the down and the kill. Shabby trying to clutch up though, a second for him comes through. And a potential, I was about to say 1v, no, there is some support to the right. Good discipline being shown by Crystallized there. He had the double, but he didn't get ahead of himself to try and take down the Titan the other side for that fight in Shabby, waiting for the crossfire. But Cassidy Bell did have the short spawn. In case I seem to have just about enough numbers and frags to boot as well. To try and stop Cassidy Bell from pushing further. Enemy mark! Pushing into this next position, the Team Queso finally getting close to the 100 point marker, which is about 15 seconds to go. Fragmentation grenades get thrown out. Don't find anybody. M bar up top in the hands of Chaos. Won't be able to find that one. Continuing to rev up. Misses another one as that player rolls off. Chavi holding up the front pillar. Now Chaos joining the 90 degree side of the map. Has missed every shot we've seen him shoot on screen. And they're going to need some production out of him. He might as well come into the fight at this point and try to just lend a hand to somebody. 30 seconds left in the hill. They could bleed it dry. Try to get it close to 200 points a second. 200 points, excuse me. Not a second, but 200 points after so many seconds to be within that 100 point threshold. Still for me, Colin Cassidy Papel continues to have the edge. I mean, you forget about the score lead for the top left for the moment. It's just look at the gameplay alone. Even without game attacks, you just say, oh, Cog is just looking a little bit more threatening, really, as they move around the map, as they position, as they choose where they select to push. And you add the power weapons, they're just moving at a different pace. They have a bit more flair to them. And I think that's quite scary for Team Queso at this point in time, because they haven't really had an answer for it. We're gonna try to get this next one. Shots on, Xavi going to the back side of the spawn where Summons is trying to hold court. Team Revive's coming through galore, 4v3 now, 178 to 100 just about. Chaos slides into the window, tries to get the shot over the top, won't be able to get it, but Xavi's there for the revive and the extra kill. One player spawns behind him, it's Summons. Summons tries to rotate over to the right very quickly to sure that you know maybe they can get a sneak kill here chavi's gonna be in a 2v1 misses the first shot he goes down 4v3 on the map right now the chaos looking to try to hide in the cubby will get one and now he's gonna try to rotate straight on to summon summons gets the miss roll and he goes down it went from a 4v3 to a 2v3 real quick on that side of the map on that hill Beautiful job, ladies and gentlemen, is sleeper now. Pulls out the m-bar shots up to the top won't be able to connect with the first one doesn't even fire it off as a matter of fact 30 seconds left in the cell. Frag grenades in hand. They're quickly rotating with Team Queso. 
Good shot from Sleeper, essentially a Superman there. The frag grenade thrown into the mix by problems and a second coming from Sleeper as well. But once again, call into the same old story. 20 seconds left on this hill. It doesn't really lead to much. Check out the other side of the map. The rotations have started with Cassidy with hell already. And Team Kato haven't really got much to show for that awesome team fight. Time and time again, they have these great pushes, but not the greatest moments. Lovely headshot from Sleeper again under Chaos. Can that really kickstart them into a push? I wonder. I mean, it's going to be, it's good. they need a spark, any kind of spark. Yeah. I don't care if it's a match swinging against Gravel right now. Big kill there. Xavi and Adverse both down and out, so they have the numbers advantage 222 to 120 in counting. Two shots left for Sleeper. He's going to rotate around, try his best to find somebody to maybe get a shot on early in this one. Nice down. Problems will clean it up. Still, Sleeper. Threatening with the M-Bar. Lovely Superman again onto Adverse. Good shots from that individual with the power weapons here on Gears. Five. Another headshot for Sleeper, this time with a shotgun. Solo lurking in the middle. 45 seconds after his hill. Plenty of points still to play for. He spot for the 1B potential. Does he find Sleeper? Yes, he does. And so does Chavi find kills of his own. Great movement there to the side. And Cassidy Bapel. Well, they've got 30 seconds left on this hill. And a great position. Ready to rotate to the next Colin as well. Chaos even ready and waiting. A secret man position once more over at the Ember. Do they happen here? As Solar goes down. They're going to get the quick revive off onto him. Casa de Propel. They're trying to rotate back to a position to be able to defend up point number two. And I mean, look at this. This is a beautiful wolf pack by Team Queso. Damage out by, by Chavi, but not enough to get any of those kills. Three down and dead now for Casa de Propel. And this could be another good, quick little respawn and retake by Team K, so trying to make it even more interesting, trying to get back into this fight every single time to make life very difficult on Casa de Papel. It was a nice push. It was straight through the short spawn, but still got work to do. Embar right in front of them in the hands of Xavi. Ooh, I was about to say that would have been a great headshot, but unfortunately it's on the wrong person. Solar's going to be taken out. Chaos trying to find Sleeper, and he does. Summons down after down coming through for him, as well as the remaining Team Queso players. They keep their distance, they have the bench, and they will hold on to this hill. Short spawn wise, check number four and number three on the map. They've taken the, the traditional spawn straight away, the hard angle, the right hand advantage there. And they're knocking on the door of this hill. All four players of Catholic here, and they're very close to that 300 mark. Problems trying to back A out as much as he can here to just add in damage. Lancer fire in from the small window is Chaos trying to get it down here. Nobody really getting enough to get the kills, but they're getting a ton of downs. There's three kills in a row. They take over the final 15 seconds, no, the final 15 to 20 seconds, really. I don't know if they stay for the whole 30. Now they see what they're able to do is this next rotation in as they come to the middle of the map. They are going to bleed that hill dry, I believe, Toby, which I, I would say is the smart thing. Get as close to 300 as possible. Yeah, I think based on Team Case's positioning, just focus on the Ember and that hill at this moment in time. Definitely the Ember at this point. They will find the kill on Chris Lines. They'll be positioned for that. So definitely no Ember on the hands of the enemy at the very least. And they will continue on their offensive straight through the short spawn to try and take down the remaining players. But Team Queso holding off strong again, keeping their distance. Pistols, Lancers, choice of weapon rather than Nashes. But Ember, great shot from Solar. The Lancer comes in from Chaos. They will sneak a kill out of that one. They are being pinched right now. Solar trying to roll away. He's going to go down. Now Chaos down as well. 37 points to 115 to go. Hill will spawn up, and Adver's early in that one will be able to settle his tea kettle on the backside of the hill. He's going to try to play defense for as long as possible because he does get the initial points off of the hill in his team's favor, but he gets double shot down quickly, and that will be a good little retake by Team Queso. Now they just have to try to stop the other members from Costa de Papel from coming through the middle of the map. First player down, first player may go out. Do indeed get that kill cleanup. So this will be an interesting wow. next set of fights by the side of Team Queso. Good shot, Sola. But even better decision making, you might argue. How often do you see someone throw a, a bloody utility grenade over a corpse in front of them just to help their team before cleaning up that kill? Such a smart player, clearly, is Sola, and so much of a killer instinct as he flew up that staircase. But now 
Team Queso, they do have energy, they show life, yeah, and they do have the short spawn for this hill, so they can, once again, gather a fair amount of points as they crack the 200 mark, and you start to question, is it possible? You know, can they get the remaining points they need before 25 the Casa, or just honestly, are Casa looking too good right now to really be stopped? 25 points to go, good little down right there by Adverse with a Lancer on to, I believe, Sleeper coming first into the fight. Two down, now three down. We're gonna let that player bleed out as well. And Proms and Summons last alive for the squad. They're gonna have to rotate around. I believe one player is lurking in the middle of the map. Is that Proms just lurking through the middle stairwell? Maybe coming on the biggest flank of his life? Mmm, great shout. Taking his time. He just needs that one give. Now he can find it. Adverse will fall. Chavi absolutely new, but he will return an accurate shot of his own and stays alive despite the pinch potential coming in. He still holds his ground and changes target as necessary. Great movement, but eventually caught out with a missed roll at the end there. But an Embar in the hands of Solar as well. 20 points needed for Cassidy Babel. And if they can win this one team fight, it could all be over. We're going to try to win one more set of slaves here. Chaos over that top pillar will get taken down. Trades coming through, though. Once again, Team Queso is staying alive in this situation, ladies and gentlemen. Back on the hill, back in the cap, and back to taking the points back in their favor. Still, they gather points. 40 second potential here. Could actually bring them up to the mark of 280 and level with Casa, but Casa continue to push on forward. Solar finding the kill there. Problems continue to do such a great job on the altar. But Chaos continues to get kills himself. The nade usage is awesome. And Casa are outnumbering right now summons. He does get the down though. An opportunity to get back into that fight, but sadly he cannot regain positioning quickly enough. And still Casa and Queso numbers flood in. Try to get another set of slays here. Summons will get the shot on around the cubby. Chaos is going to go down, holding on to every last possible point that they can, trying to get this as knotted up as close to possible. 250 to 284. 34 difference in the point differential. 13 seconds left on this hill. They're going to rotate over. Already one player inside of the next hill. Crystallize. And two other players rotating down from the close respawn are waiting in the wings. Five seconds left, meaning about seven to ten seconds before that new hill will spawn if nobody else touches that last previous hill. This will be what they're able to do with this next retake. Summons backside of the spawn. He's going to have the perfect lancer angle as those players run right in front of him. He's putting it to the best possible use that he can. Summons cannot die. Ideal world for these guys. If he can find even one kill, that would help out a lot, but he's not able to do even that. Sleeper in a lot of trouble as well to his right, but he will hold his ground. Some good shots actually coming out from his shotgun. The full red himself and forced to pull back. 289 to 279, Collins, the 10 point game. 289 to 279, as you said, 11 to 21, depending upon who can get those points. And it looks like inside of the hill is going to be Casa de Papel looking to shut it down. 296 and counting. I don't know if anybody is close enough to even get a touch. They are not indeed this time. That'll be the end of the map, end of the matchup. Casa de Papel take out Team Queso 3 to 1 here in Pro League. So close, yet so far, Team Queso somehow brought it back to a 10-point game on that last hill, but despite their efforts, Cassidy Babel, they remained composed from the bitter but until the bitter end, and surprising, honestly, that Team Queso even got that close, Colin, with how well Castle was playing. From start to finish, they were awesome, but it's, uh, it's a sad state of affairs, sometimes controlled, because despite the long journey, you can be just shy in the end of just the handful of points you need to force it to a map number five. Yeah, I mean, but it was a great and very gamey effort by the side of Team Queso. It was impressive to see that they didn't give up at any point in time. They continued to fight back against the Tide time in and time out and got a ton of points in their favor as well. So I, just kudos to them. Shout out to them for not giving up in this one, but they still go down 3-1. I'm very impressed with Casa de Papel's ability in control right now. They they played both of those control maps pretty exquisitely through the first, I would say, the first one all the way through, but that one, mm. they had the one stumble, but it wasn't until after they had really accumulated like 220 points or so. Yeah, I am thoroughly impressed from this Casa team, Casa de Papel team. They, they made us all look silly in many ways with the predictions. We all went Team Queso, chat included, but... Casa de Vivelle, they came out swinging, and Team Queso absolutely did not come out swinging on Ritual. That's uh, absolutely uh, guaranteed there, at least, when you look at how they were playing. The guys in front of us, Chavi, lovely double there, but 
Yeah, I mean, look at Ritual when you compare it to Regency. Kind of different in a way. You can just run around the map and get a lot of kills time after time on Ritual. Meanwhile, on Regency, it's a lot more setup heavy. The M bug can come into play and have a bit more of an influence than, say, even the Torp bug. Uh, on, on Ritual, oftentimes. Sleeper, in the highlights here, making great examples of that. Body check after body check, Superman after Superman, even in Sleeper's case this year, uh, in, in this scenario. But it was kind of just the consistency of Casa de Bavel in playing the basics uh, to a T uh, here on, uh, on both Regency and Ritual. They weren't making the same mistakes of pushing 20 second hills, which, by the way, we did see again on Regency. I'm disappointing to, disappointed to say. Um, and they're oftentimes pushing the right or correct side of the map based on where the short swarm will go. You alluded to it, you know, down in Garden. Team Kaser, for some reason, running around the complete opposite side from where the next one will be. My only estimation is because they want to play for right hand just in case there's any secret mans or close held fights there by their opponents in front of them. And it's, uh, it's disappointing, I guess, from the Team Kaser side that they did make a number of mistakes while their opponents cast it well made them uh, pu get punished for it because they were pretty much clinical from start to finish in this entire series. Even on Harbour, the one map they lost, it was only the, uh, a case of losing by one round. And when you look at the whole maps here and the scores in front of us and this wonderful graphic, it makes a lot more sense why Cassidy Bavel, um found the scores that they did uh, and kind of really resulted uh, in, in all these maps, all those plays, all those clinical lack of mistakes and strategies employed by them on different modes in Gears Esports, how they came to this uh, this final score on each of the map. It was an incredible uh, performance, really, by Casa de Papel. Map on map after map, they they did their best possible their best possible job at getting every possible fight win in their favor. It was just really well done by them. I, again, the only map that they lost, you said, was still very close. Vils is still very coming down to the wire. It went all the way to the round number nine, as a matter of fact, and having to come out to that final fight with both of the power weapons going over to Team Queso's side, and Casa de Papel still, at that point, made it interesting. So they made a believer out of me tonight. Come hell or high water, they they were fantastic in this matchup against Team Queso with that 3-1 victory. I just I, I look back on all the great plays we had tonight. I know there was a ton of them. We had some early contenders. We had some late contenders. But but who who or what team, either what player, pick either one player or one team real quick for me, Toby, who played the best tonight? Mm, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I, I For me personally, right, I have my, I have, there's a, there's a few clips that stand out to me. Um, do you know, surprisingly, as you bring that up, I have to point it out before I forget, is just the, the clock tower that we saw was, was great between Rise and Rebel just because it was more about the, before we go to the flashy stuff, it really is the frag grenades and things like that that, that were really special tonight by a lot of these teams. And it was, it's fantastic to see Rushies in particular with a lot of those plays with the frag grenades thrown from down bottom up top against some of the best players in this game, finding, connecting with those kills so many times. But yeah. So I'd mention that at least because uh, I'm sure we're going to no, get into I, some flashy gameplay in a moment. No reason not to mention it. Sometimes doing the dirty work, doing those simplistic plays, getting the right throws, the right placement on fragmentation grenades is what propels your team to a victory. Something else that can propel your team to a victory is a four piece baby. And our e swap X play of the day is a four piece by none other. The one and the only monkeys. Bang! Boom! Ah! Do you think he was saying that at the exact same time as he was shooting? I really, I really wish he did. I know he same. didn't, but I really wish he did. Because there was a level of confidence from all of these players and Rebel that is just personified in this clip. The first kill, holding true on that cover. He's not even going to take cover, Colin. He's going to hold his shot because he knows Ryze are going to push. They're going to try and push him, but he is so well prepared that he will not fall. Well played indeed from uh, Monkeys there, oh, right at the back yeah. of the spawn. And uh, well played indeed in the context of his team around him and setting themselves up for success in that next ring. Without a doubt, and we had a lot of games today. Uh, we had what would be considered an upset in our final matchup of the day with, you know, Casa de Papel going over Team Queso with everybody betting on Team Queso. But let's take a look at today's results here. 3-0 for the Pioneers, 3-1 for Rise, but two close games, really. 3-1 by Casa de Papel over Team Queso goes to the wire in most of their maps. E United and Fury 1 go to map 5, but I mean, good to see the teams on top performing to the best of their ability. Pioneers undefeated, Rebel 
drops to Rise, who is now still undefeated. Pittsburgh Knights 2-0, and of course, United 2-0. Yeah, yeah. It, it, again, it's that second match in the schedule, just like the graphic yesterday, where the, the top dog, one of the top dogs, and definitely not the underdog in their game, United this time around, dropping a lot of maps to Fury 1 and taking it to final map. Surprising. Absolutely so. Rise 3-1 in Rebel. We saw that, of course, and a 3-1. Great one from Casa on the Team Queso. We've had some good games, it's safe to say, on broadcast today. It was uh, a little bit close to the, the, the latter two, of course, and Rebel... A very good first map, you know, where we saw that that play of the day from Monkeys. I mean, that was a really entertaining one. And it was a control. It was a battle of controls, absolutely, from Casa and Team Queso, which was super entertaining to see. I'm not sure if you agree with that one. Um, and I think it's more so a night of control, more so than the other modes that we've seen today because of that. It's been such an epic time seeing the, the collection of mistakes that occur from one team and not the other, and some of the fast movements and the, the pop-off moments. Uh, it's been quite fun to watch, absolutely. And a really good uh, day of Pro League overall. Tonight's matches were fun to watch, but something else that's fun to watch is keeping one eye on the standings. Let's take a look at where teams finished after week number one. Couple of 2 0s there. Four teams sitting at 2 0, two teams at 1 1, and the rest at 0 and 2. Luckily, though, we have no teams with 0% map win percentage. So everybody is at least competing mm. thus far, Toby. Yeah, great point. Great point. We've got new teams, of course, in the Pro League. Northern Forces being one of them who have a, had not a too great a time so far going over to two. I'm sure they absolutely were aiming for better than that. But it's uh, it's it's clear to see the top four are kind of the favorite teams in, in Pro Play and have been for quite a while now. And it's, good. it's cool to see, I guess, that they've cemented themselves 2-0 to early on. But Pioneers, 67% map percentage. Not too great. Absolutely not too great. Uh, so far from them, uh, and I'm sure they'll be looking to pick it up uh, in the future. Got to see better out of them, map in and map out. The chance to see better out of them, though, is not going to be in next until next Tuesday when Gears Pro League returns right here on the Xbox channel. You're going to have uh, Team Queso and Digital Slayers at 5 with Northern Forces and Rebel on the off station. Pittsburgh Knights and E United. They are on the main stage with Rise and Fury 1 on the off station matchup. And Pioneers and Casa de Papel to finish off the match. That is a hella good slate of games, Toby. Yeah, I like that. Can't wait to see how Casa do, especially after today. They've been so impressive. Need to nail the, the kind of basics, if you will, before you can take on the Titans. They've certainly done that. Now they just need to bring the flair to topple KCP in those team fight environments. EK versus the United, of course, though, the big one. The first time that it's some of the two top teams, I guess, go to head to head head together. You know, out of those top four that I alluded to earlier. Excited to see the result of that one. Well, you've had back to back nights here in Pro League. Toby here to start our first week of the final split of Gears Esports for Gears Five. Any final thoughts for the evening, Toby? Uh, yeah, I'll re reiterate again how exciting it's been uh, tonight. It's honestly the controls have been, have been the standout for me. Very impressed with Cassidy Babel. It goes without saying. Uh, happily incorrect it, with my uh, prediction. I did say it would be close, um, but it wasn't actually that close in the end anyway. It was Cassidy just sweeping the floor of, of Team Queso. It was only one round they lost to. a lost by in that last one on, on Harbor, of course, that escalation. Uh, and also the Rise game was awesome too. Rebels started off strong. They were looking phenomenal. We were like, where's Rise going with this? You know, are they, are they, when are they going to wake up? Boy, did they wake up on Clock Tower and use their cerebral gameplay, if you will, with a strategy clearly being practiced, practiced with those nades, as we alluded to, with Rushies throwing them from down bottom. Some really entertaining games, and I'm hoping Northern Forces in particular too uh, can uh, uh, see improvement in their performances uh, in future. So I'm sure you'd like to see Kenny do a lot better than where they currently sit on the standings. Of course I would, of course I would. Toby, it's been an honor and a pleasure casting alongside of you yet again hope we get to do it again soon sometime my friend but for now ladies and gentlemen if you want to catch more gears esports action well guess you got to tune in to twitch.tv slash umg gaming tomorrow at five o'clock eastern for e days it returns tomorrow night the invitational weekly tournament the best teams in gears roll out of spawn to try to win the biggest chunk of change presented by umg gaming Remember, I'm going to leave you the same way every time I'm the got the chance to be the host. No matter what you might think about this being the final split of Gears Esports or Gears 5's Pro League, Gears 
they never stop turning. If you tune in tomorrow, we'll see you then. If we don't see you until next Tuesday, make sure you're right back here for Gears Pro League.